Joining us now from New York to discuss Clinton's plan as her campaign's chief strategist, Joel Benenson. And Joel, welcome back. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me. Well, let's start with the debate. Uh, and I'd like your reaction to the fact that Donald Trump invited Jennifer Flowers and now the news from Mike Pence that, no, she won't be there. Uh, look, I, I think, uh, listen, these debates for, for the American people, Chris, I think this is going to be a very uh, watched debate. I think there are very high estimates of how many people will tune in. I think what they want to hear is a, a full substantive debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump so they can make a judgment about which one of these people actually has the experience, knowledge, and judgment to implement plans that will make a real difference in their lives. That's what Hillary Clinton is going to be focusing on, talking to the American people about their lives, what she's going to do for them, how she's going to get things done that will help them get ahead. Uh, Joel, uh, you're taking the high road now, but you know some would say that your side started it because you guys tweeted out yesterday that Mark Cuban who is a very loud uh, Trump critic, was going to be sitting in the front row. And in fact, before the Jennifer Flowers news even broke, the Commission on Presidential Debates was very unhappy with that. Well, I, I, I didn't hear anything about what the Commission said. I think Mark Cuban is a successful businessman. He believes in things like profit sharing to help get wages rising. I think he did that at some of his businesses. I think that's important is the economic lives of people. And I think the fact that so many business people are endorsing Hillary Clinton uh, because she has an economic plan that will work uh, for growing our economy, but growing it in a way that's fair and that helps get incomes rising for working Americans, which is the biz biggest economic challenge we face. As opposed to a candidate like Donald Trump, who says he thinks wages are too high in America and we should get rid of the federal minimum wage. I think it's legitimate to have a business person sitting there uh, who's been advocating for you uh, because of your economic policies. As I discussed uh, with Governor Pence, in the wake of these uh, terrible police shootings, the violent protests in Charlotte, that will almost certainly be a prime topic tomorrow night. I want to ask you about something that Clinton said this week. Here it is. We have two more names to add to a list of African Americans killed by police officers in these encounters. It's unbearable, and it needs to become intolerable. But Joel, uh, Charlotte police say that when Keith Scott was shot, that he was armed with a gun. And when you look at the wife's video, it's apparent that the police shouted at him to drop the gun 12 times in 38 seconds. So why is Clinton siding with the protesters against the police saying that this is intolerable and not a reasonable response from the police? Well, I, I think what Sarah, Secretary Clinton was addressing was that we have a disproportionate number of incidents uh, in the past year or two in which unarmed African-American men, African-American men have been shot uh, by police in some of these circumstances. So I think uh, she was saying that the results here uh, are troubling. Uh, there have been communities even in North Carolina like Greensboro that have been studies about disproportionate stops, traffic stops of African Americans uh, that showed even though African Americans carry fewer weapons in their cars, uh, they get stopped more. Uh, and I think that's what she was talking about, the disproportionate uh, effect here of, of what's happening on the streets. Look, uh, these are tragedies. Uh, they have been happening with increasing frequency. They are troubling. I think you showed the video and said both sides say it's inconclusive what, what happened in, in this incident. But I think the more important thing here is that we have to have, and as Hillary Clinton has said, uh, better uh, relations between communities and police. We have to have respect uh, for the law and respect but, by the law. I think that's how we have to reduce these shootings. I've got to break in here shootings. because the comment that we just showed, she wasn't talking about police uh, relations and, and general sort of 30,000 feet. She was talking about police shootings that end up with African men, uh, African men dying. And I'm af asking you, does she have any reason to believe that the Charlotte police response in the shooting death of Keith Scott was unreasonable? Well, but Chris, I think your, your, ask, your question kind of undercuts the question you're putting to me. She was speaking generally about what some people feel has been a pattern over a year and a half to two years of African-American men, most of them, the vast majority of them, unarmed by police or dying at their hands. But, but, but that's an but, undeniable... Well, wait a minute. No, Do you deny, minute, Joel, Chris, that that's wait, been wait a, a pattern? The, the police say that Keith Scott was armed. 
Well, right now they say that. I, I, have they, have they uh, said their video shows that clearly? No, but they have a, a, a right, picture. Right, exactly, no, Chris. But they, they have haven't a picture said their the, own they video. They have a picture of, they of a gun. They have a picture of a gun. They, 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 you hear in the tape the police saying a dozen times, drop the gun. And the police chief, who is African-American, says that the police acted responsibly, but Hillary Clinton I, seems to think they didn't. I think we ought to wait for the end of the full investigation, Chris, and, and unfortunately, uh, there have been other shootings like this where police said somebody was armed, they turned out they weren't. Let's let the, let's let the investigation run its full course. Would you agree that Hillary not, Clinton should do that as well? Well, I think she did. Her comment was a general comment about, as I said before, Chris, and I think it is not an unfair or inaccurate comment that we have had too many shootings here of black usually black men, many of them unarmed in these circumstances where the police say they felt threatened, the person had no weapon. We have to get to a better understanding of how to stop those kinds. Look, Hillary Clinton has been a supporter of law enforcement throughout her career. She's the woman who after 9-11 went to fight for health benefits for our first responders. She saw what they did down there uh, at the Trade Center afterwards, going into buildings to rescue people, breathing air that officials told them uh, was safe. Turns out it wasn't safe. She went to bat for them to get the health, health benefits right. they needed to recover. All right. Let's turn to uh, another issue. We learned on Friday that as part of the FBI investigation into Hillary Clinton's private email system, that Cheryl Mills, her chief of staff when she was, uh, Clinton was Secretary of State, that she was one of the people, five people, who received limited immunity. How do you explain that, Joel? Well, Chris, um, I think you're probably familiar with what limited immunity is, and it's fairly routine when police are, and law enforcement are investigating a particular issue, and you're sitting down with them to give full cooperation, turn over materials, hand over computers, Blackberries, whatever. Uh, they narrow their scope of their investigation to the issue at hand. And so what limited immunity is, anything else? Uh, is irrelevant to them at that. They're looking at the specific inv investigation. And uh, that's what limited immuni immunity means, Chris. I believe you know that. So it's fairly appropriate and routine uh, when people are sitting down with them, turning over a, a, a wealth of materials that have nothing to do with the investigation at hand. Well, they, it had something to do with the investigation. No, they no, wanted the but, laptop but the, for but a the reason. If, 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 Chris, I may just the ask, if I may just ask the question, if Clinton... <laughs> well, I'm trying to ask a question, Joel. If, yeah. if Clinton did nothing wrong. If no one on her staff did anything wrong, why did Cheryl Mills ask for and receive immunity, limited immunity, from criminal prosecution in this case? Because the reason for that, Chris, is so that if you're handing over a vast uh, amount of materials, something like your computer or your Blackberry or whatever, it could be files that they want that are not germane or relevant. It could be conversations with anybody else, your accountant, somebody. Law enforcement offers this up to you to encourage you to sit well, down and provide they didn't, they didn't all the relevant offer it information to her. They, with they, them. Cheryl Mills asked for it. But it's a fairly routine uh, process, and you know that, Chris, so I think let's talk about it. You know that prosecutors and investigators, when they're investigating, I, I, uh, agree I, to actually, limited I'll immunity be honest, so I, they it can may be get... True. I, I didn't know, Chris, I don't can know I finish that. the answer quickly? So that they can get a good look at the information that is germane to their investigation. Fine. That's what they wanted. Fine. They wanted to make sure they had access to Cheryl Mills' information about email. Finally, I've got, I've got else. about a minute left, and I want to ask you about one other thing you heard. Sure. Uh, Mike Pence go on about the differences between the Trump Foundation and the Clinton Foundation, and he said the Clinton Foundation was pay to play. You gave money to the foundation, you got uh, special access to the State Department. Your response to that? The calendar does show uh, I, I that more than Governor half the non governmental yeah, people she met with were donors to the foundation. No, no. Uh, 85 people out of over 2,000 people. No, 85 18, out of 150. No, and, and Chris, as you know, two weeks after the initial headline said half the people, non-governmental people she met with, the AP uh, took down uh, their headline, their statement, acknowledged it was wrong and sloppy because they only looked at a small sliver of the non-governmental people she met with. But the important point on the Clinton Foundation and maybe Governor Pence's proximity to, to Donald Trump is going to rank him on the record breakers of uh, people who have been fact-checked for, for lying and dissembling. 
The fact is the Clinton donation discloses all their donors. Governor Pence should know that. The Clinton Foundation money has gone as an A rating from Charity Navigator because 90% of the funds it raises go to life-saving AIDS drugs for half the people with AIDS around the world, better food for our school children, and neither, the, neither of the Clintons ever took a dime from that foundation. In fact, they donated millions to their foundation, well, I... as opposed to Donald Trump, who didn't put a nickel in for seven years. And in fact, if he's given any money to charity through it, it was other people's money, not his own. Joe, we're going to have to leave that. I suspect there are a few things that you said there that the fact checkers will look at, but you know, that's happened. I welcome them. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure to talk to you, sir. Thanks, Chris.